Hello everyone and welcome once again to Caleb Likes Books. Today I am going to be bringing you another book review and that is for the second entry in Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive which is Words of Radiance. Now those of you who may have been subscribed to my channel for a few months uh, or have seen some of my uh, my videos from back in December may know that I read and reviewed The Way of Kings, the first book in this series, um, back in December and I got into Brandon Sanderson's work in general last year. Um, and The Way of Kings was arguably my favorite book that I read last year. It was actually a toss-up, kind of, between that and Warbreaker, which is another one of his books. Um, but I loved both of those, but I especially really loved uh, The Way of Kings. I thought, and still think, it is a very nearly perfect book in my mind. I, I really didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. I just absolutely loved it. Um, and so I was very much looking forward to reading this one, um, and I'm hoping to get caught up on the Stormlight Archive and the Cosmere in general, uh, this year, at least mostly. Um, but I was very much looking forward to reading this one, and I have to say, it did not disappoint. Before I actually start, like, the review part of this, uh, I'm going to say I'm actually going to include a spoiler section towards the end of the review. Uh, typically, I only do spoiler-free in my reviews, um, but, uh, there are some things that were in this book that I just want to talk about, uh, that are spoilers, um, and so there's going to be that at the end of the video, but I will mention when I'm going to get into spoilers, so if you haven't read this book already, um, then you can avoid that. Starting off positives, uh, first of all, it was just, this, this isn't really a positive for this book, but it was just so nice to read Brandon Sanderson again. I know it's only been a few months since the last book of his that I read, but he has quickly become probably my favorite author and has written several of my favorite books that I have read um, within the last couple of years. And so it was just very nice to get back into another one of his stories. Um, the Really, a lot of the, the positives from The Way of Kings that I talked about uh, would also apply here. Um, firstly, the, the characters. Uh, I, uh, I loved the characters in The Way of Kings, and that definitely continues here. Um, Kaladin was my favorite character from The Way of Kings, and he was kind of the main character of that book, even though there were several different viewpoints. Um, he is probably still my favorite at this point, I would say, but he was really good in this book. Uh, kind of what was going on with him and, and the other characters, I guess I'll talk about real quick. Um, and by the way, I will be spoiling The Way of Kings in this review, so if you have not read Way of Kings, then sorry. Um, but um, in uh, at the uh, end of The Way of Kings, Kaladin meets up with Dalinar and Adolin. And um, so in this book, he is kind of a part of their, uh, I don't know if part of their army or what. He, he's kind of uh, meant as being like a bodyguard type of, of guy to... Uh, all of them and the important people within the kingdom and all of that stuff. Um, and so that's kind of what he's doing. Um, he's still working with Bridge 4 and everything, but that's what he's doing. Um, and also um, kind of learning more about his abilities because in the first book, he discovered that he was able to use Stormlight um, and use that kind of magic system and stuff. Um, and he expands on that in this book. You have Shalon, who was uh, uh, in the first book, um, who is sent off to the Shattered Plains, which is where Dalinar and Adolin and Cowden, and basically all of the other important people um, are, uh, and where the, the primary uh, plot of this book takes place. Um, and she's sent there because uh, she has been set up to potentially marry Adolin. Um, and so she's going there, and um, she's got a lot of interesting stuff going on with her, uh, trying to kind of figure out some of the stuff that Yasna, who mentored her in the first book, uh, trying to figure out um, some of the stuff that she learned from her, and uh, kind of looking at what Yasna was working on and everything, and trying to kind of make sense of it, and kind of piece together all the different things that at this point are unknown. Then you have Dalinar and Adolin who are still like at war with the Parshendi, I believe is uh, what they're called. Um, and they're kind of doing their thing, uh, fighting them, trying to figure things out. 
Um, Dalinar is still having a bunch of weird stuff going on with him, because in the first book he was having visions and things, um, and stuff like that. And, and all these characters, of course, kind of come together. They all kind of work together, um, and uh, a lot of stuff happens. And again, I really loved all of the characters in this book. Uh, I would say in this one, it's kind of uh, different from The Way of Kings for me. Uh, because in The Way of Kings, Kaladin was, like, easily my favorite part of the book. Um, not that I didn't absolutely love the other stuff as well, because I did, but Kaladin's sections just really resonated with me. Um, whereas in this one, I feel like I enjoyed all of the sections fairly equally. Um, and I think that might be partly because as the book goes on, all of these characters start to interact with each other. And so even though you have, like, chapters from say, Dalinar's point of view, he is still interacting with Adolin and Kaladin and all of this stuff. Um, and so they're all kind of together in that way. Um, but there wasn't really any one character that particularly stood out to me in this book, um, which isn't a bad thing by any means. Uh, they were just all very strong. But the, the big thing that really stands out to me about this book, especially in comparison to The Way of Kings, is the plot. Um, the plot in The Way of Kings I did absolutely love, um, but to me The Way of Kings was much more interesting in terms of characters. I mean, I'm more of a character reader anyway, but in this one I feel like the plot was uh, a lot more memorable than it was in the first book. Again, not that the first book wasn't, but there's just a lot of stuff that happens in this book, which I'll talk about probably a little bit more in the spoiler section. Um, but there is just even from the basically very beginning of this book, there are things that happen that just shocked me and and left me just like, that's crazy that that just happened. Um, and that happens like throughout this book. Um, there's, uh, there's like five parts of this book and like each of them has at least like one thing that just, like I read it and I was like, that's just crazy, like, you know, it was, it was just something that really left an impact on me. Um, and so there's just a lot of plot things in this book. Um, and the plot itself was also very interesting. Um, just kind of seeing the way everything came together and all that stuff. Another thing that stood out to me with this one uh, was the world building, which also was the case for The Way of Kings. Um, I said, I think, in that review, uh, or in some place where I talked about The Way of Kings, that uh, the world of the Stormlight Archive, Roshar, is probably, from what I have read at least, the most vivid and interesting world that Brandon Sanderson has written that I've read. Um, and that was definitely still the case here. It expands on the world in a lot of ways. Uh, it answers, uh, in some ways, some of the mysteries of the world and the world building that were uh, kind of hinted at in the first book and also kind of creates some more mysteries and just there's a lot of good world building stuff in this book that really kind of enhances your understanding of this world, um, but also gives you more things to think about that you don't really know the answer to yet, but you're very interested in, in finding out. And going back to the characters as well, something that I forgot to mention, I really enjoyed the dynamics between the characters. So not only the characters themselves, but just the dynamics between them, I really enjoyed. Um, the, like, uh, for example, um, you have, like, Kaladin and Adolin, who kind of butt heads a little bit at times, and their dynamic is very interesting. You have Kaladin and Sil, his spren, uh, who was in the first book, um, and their dynamic is a lot of fun. You have, uh, Shalon interacting with all these characters, um, and that was just wonderful as well. Um, and so, like, just the dynamics between all the characters were handled really well, and I really enjoyed them. And a final positive that I do want to mention is actually the interludes. Um, I, in, even in this book, but also in the first book especially, just didn't really care for the interludes that much, but I did like them more in this book. Um, mainly because, uh, at least in, in my mind, um, they tied in a little more, more obviously, I guess, to the, the main plot of this book, um, because there are certain interludes that take place from the perspective of Parshendi characters, um, and so they kind of hint at things that are to come later in the book, um, so I enjoyed that, and then there's also, uh, like, Zeth, uh, who is the very first, uh, or not really the very first, because there's the prelude in Way of Kings, but the very first character you meet in the prologue, 
Um, he had some interludes in the first book, and he has some in here as well, and I really enjoyed him. Um, he was also a very interesting character that I am excited to see uh, in the future. But now that I've talked about positives, I do actually want to talk about some of the more negative aspects of this book, because uh, it's not really anything in particular. There's not really much specific... Like, there's not anything that I can really point to and say this didn't really work for me, because like The Way of Kings, for the most part, or the vast majority, this book really did work for me. Um, I, I loved reading it from start to finish. There was so many times where I had to put it down um, because, you know, I just couldn't keep reading, um, and I just didn't want to. Um, and so far, actually, the only case where something like that has happened to me has been with Brandon Sanderson. So another reason why I consider him probably my favorite author at this point. But something about this one just didn't quite get up there for me. Um, I would still consider it definitely one of the best Brandon Sanderson books. Um, but it just wasn't quite at the same level for me as The Way of Kings. And I can't really place why exactly that is because, again... I loved the characters. There was a bunch of plot stuff that really interested me. Uh, lots of events that I thought were really exciting. Um, whereas in The Way of Kings, I think, you know, generally the plot and all that stuff was really well done throughout. And there were parts that really shocked me and parts that really excited me. But that was even more so in this one. Um, so in that way, I would consider it superior to Way of Kings. But um, in a lot of ways, you know, it was just as good as The Way of Kings for me, but something about it just didn't grab me the same way. And I don't know if it's because The Way of Kings was my first introduction to this series, and so I was just getting so into the world and the characters and all of this stuff and discovering everything for the very first time. And so now, even though it was super awesome to return to that world in this story, um, maybe it just didn't land for me the same way. It didn't, like, hit me the same way. I don't know what it is. Um, but something about this one was just slightly lesser to me, but not by very much at all. And so now that I've gotten my general spoiler-free opinions out of the way, I am going to talk spoilers very briefly. I may put it down in the description, uh, the timestamp, for so you can skip to the end of this video. Um, if I may forget to do that, I don't know. But I am going to talk spoilers now, so if you have not read this book and you want to, uh, then I would recommend not watching past this point, because there are some very big things that happen in this book that I want to talk about. So, first of all, I just have to say the, the part in Chapter 7, I believe it was, the uh, that moment uh when uh Yasna and um what's her name Shalon were on the boat and Yasna is killed um and it's revealed later in the book that she maybe isn't dead um I'm not exactly sure how that actually works so don't spoil it for me in the comments or anything but like when I saw that she came back I was thinking maybe she wasn't dead uh but it it's pretty uh it's pretty heavily implied that she definitely is dead in that scene, but apparently not. I don't know how that works. But, um, you know, the scene where she is killed in the ship, I, I sat just stunned for like a full minute or two, just like, and I reread that passage again, and I was like, there's no way that just happened in chapter seven. There's like 90 chapters in this book. So chapter seven one of the main characters of the last book just dies. And I knew, I assumed that something like that would happen in this book. I did not expect it to happen that soon. So that was like a real punch in the gut for me. Um, and especially with the epigraphs before um, the chapters in this book, which by the way, also another thing, the epigraphs were excellent. I loved reading a lot of them. Um, but the epigraph before that chapter was from the perspective of Navani. And she was like, yeah, the death of the king, the old king, was really bad. But then this one was even worse. And uh, I read that and I was like, oh, something's going to happen to a character near the end of this book, isn't it? And then it was that chapter. 
Um, and I just, I just wanted to share that because that, that was one of the most memorable moments of this book for me, just because of how hard it hit me. Some other stuff to talk about, uh, the, the fight, uh, in the arena, uh, I think it was an arena anyway, with Adolin and Kaladin and where Adolin was like challenging people for their shards. Um, that scene was super, super well done. I was on the edge of my seat throughout it. And of course, you know, you get to the end, I was like, you know, I'm sure they're going to pull through. And then they did. And I was like, yes. And then Kaladin uh, ends up in prison. And I was like, okay, maybe they didn't quite pull through on that. Um, that was a great, great scene as well. I loved the ending of this book as well as fantastic. Like the first book, this ends with a very big battle sequence. Uh, not quite, I think, to the same level as book one, because I think uh, that one was a bit longer. Um, and I actually was, for the most part, more into the first book's big battle at the end. But uh, Kaladin fighting Seth uh, was just super cool. Um, it was it was such a great moment. Um, Kaladin, you know, he was, you know, not able to use his magic and all that stuff anymore. And then the scene where that comes back and everything, super well done. And then also you had Moash, who... I had grown to love over the course of the first book and most of this book. Um, I had heard from the community that several people were not really fans of Moash, and so I figured something was going to happen eventually. I don't know if this is the, the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of the fandom kind of turning on him. Uh, maybe that's still to come, which... Uh, but... I, I loved Moash. I thought he was great. I loved his dynamic with Kaladin. So then when he's like, yeah, I want to kill the king. Are you in? Uh, I was like, okay. Um, well, that, that was quite a thing that I did not see coming. Or I kind of saw coming a little bit based on some of the clues that had been earlier. But I was like... It that that's not gonna happen, right? Like he seems like a kind of kind of cool guy. Um, and then that happened. And the the thing about that. Uh, now I'm off on this tangent, going off of the, the fight. But uh, the thing is with, with Moash and him actually wanting to assassinate the king, um, I don't know if anyone else felt this way, but I, and I assume probably because this is also how Kaladin feels, I got it. Like, it's not something that I, I was thinking, no, don't do that. That's, there's no way that's going to go well. But like, as he was explaining it and everything, I was like, I kind of see where you're coming from, um, which I think is just the best way to write something like that. Um, so that as well was really well done. Um, but yeah, the fight with, with Kaladin and Seth was fantastic. Just the, the description and the just uh, all that stuff with the Everstorm happening, which I was very curious about that because it actually mentions it on the back cover on the little blurb. Um, but just seeing that happen and the description of that was super cool. I love also that, uh, you know, that's happening, which is obviously this big, very bad thing. But what I love about it is that now the state of the world has changed. Um, and it's something that I, I kind of also happened, uh, at the end of the Mistborn trilogy, which I'm not going to talk about because I'm not doing spoilers for Mistborn, um, but um, the state of the world of the Mistborn trilogy changes at the end of the trilogy, and I'm not going to say in what way, but if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I love that, and I haven't read the Wax and Wayne books yet. I'm going to read those next, uh, not directly next after this, but those are the next Cosmere books I'm reading. Um, and so I'm very interested to see how that goes, and much the same with this. The Everstorm happening, this much more intense storm that is different from the other ones, um, but it's now just out there and happening, um, and I assume going to influence, uh, future books. Uh, I just love that. I love that there is just this thing that is now, I assume long term but maybe not maybe they'll find a way to change it but i assume it's going to be long term something that has just now changed the state of the world and i love that um and i can't wait to see how that influences things later on another thing to talk about uh although this is kind of a warbreaker spoiler or, or not really a warbreaker spoiler but it is related to war warbreaker so 
if you don't want to be spoiled on that, because I kind of have to mention this thing in order to actually talk about it, um, then, you know, maybe, I don't know. But, <laughs> um, so, from Warbreaker, there's this sword called Nightblood, um, which was very entertaining. It's basically a sentient sword that talks to its wielder in their mind, which is super cool. And at the end of this book, Seth is dead, kind of, but then he's like coming back and he is given Nightblood. And I love that moment. I knew that Nightblood was going to be in the Stormlight Archive. I had already had that spoiled for me. There's a handful of things like that that have been spoiled for me with this series. Thankfully, none of the big stuff, I think, has been spoiled for me. But I knew that Nightblood was in it. But that moment where it's like uh, he's being given a new weapon... And it's like, it's a sword and a sheath. And they're like, oh, the shard blade wouldn't have a sheath. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I was like, the blade's black. And I just got this big grin on my face because I love Warbreaker. Um, and then, you know, the the little, hey, do you want to destroy some evil today? Oh, that was just a great moment. I, I had the biggest grin on my face when I saw that because Nightblood's just cool. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how that plays into the later books as well. Um... So that was really cool. And then the final spoilery thing that I want to talk about is the epilogue, uh, which is from the perspective of Hoyd, like it was in the first book. Um, which, by the way, I love the epilogues being from Hoyd's perspective. I assume that's the case in the, the future books as well. Um, but um, that scene, first of all, it was just nice to see Hoyd again. Um, and also, going off on another small tangent, there's a scene where Hoyd talks to Shallan, but it's not mentioned that it is Hoyd. Um, it just is implied based on how he talks and what he uh, is talking about. And I think uh, later when they actually meet um, and he's there as Wit, um, she actually mentions that or something of the sort. Um, but that was like one of the first times uh, that scene where they first meet. Um, that's one of the first times that I actually saw a scene with Hoyd that didn't mention him by name where I actually caught that he was there uh, because he's like telling her this story and stuff and I just thought I'd mention that because it was cool but the last scene with Hoyd and then Yasna appears um, like I said earlier I had a feeling that she probably wasn't dead considering how important she was uh, plus the fact that she's on the cover of Oathbringer the next book um, so I was like, maybe something funky is going on there. Maybe she's not actually dead. But I was pretty well convinced by the death scene that she was probably dead. So seeing her again, super cool. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but uh, it's cool to see her again. And I'm glad that she is maybe not dead. That's pretty much it for spoilers. But in case you can't tell by how much I've talked about this book and just all of the things that I've said about it, I absolutely love this book. Um, this is the longest review that I have done, I'm pretty sure, because I've been recording for like 15 minutes longer than usual. But I did really love this book. It was a great entry into this series. Um, again, even though I maybe didn't love it on the same level, just purely subjectively for me, how it impacted me on the same level as The Way of Kings, it is definitely like, in terms of most things the same or even better. So as for a rating for this one, I would probably give it a, I want to give it a 10 out of 10. I might give it a 9.5 because it's not quite on the same level for me, but I think I am just going to give it a 10 because it's just so good. Um, and yeah, that, that's pretty much all I've got. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this review. Let me know down in the comments. If you have read this one, let me know what you think of it. Um, and uh, I, I just absolutely love my time with this one. I cannot wait to continue with Oathbringer. However, I am going to be taking a break from the Stormlight Archive because, as I said earlier, um, in the spoiler section, so if you didn't watch that section, then you missed this, but um, I am next going to be reading the Wax and Wayne books, at least the first three. I'm going to wait until uh, the end of everything else before I read Lost Metal. But I'm going to read that, and then I'm going to read Arcane Moon Bounded, and then I am going to finally dive back into Oathbringer. So I am very much excited to do so. Uh, continue my uh, journey with the Stormlight Archive and with the Cosmere in general. So anyways, that is it for this video. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.